Okay, for these last few examples, uh, again, just different applications. So we'll just try to pick what we need and apply the right formulas. So John wants to establish an account that will supplement his retirement income beginning 25 years from now for a 4.5% interest rate compounded continuously. Find the lump sum he must deposit today so that $500,000 will be available at the time of retirement. Okay, so which formula should we use? Remember, there's key words that will point you to that formula. Compounded continuously. So that is only one formula that's going to work. So your PERT formula. So now, what do we know and where does it go? So we got 25 years, so there's our time. We got a 4.5% interest rate, so that's going to have to be our R. So what's this 500,000? Be careful. So find the lump sum he must deposit today. They don't, he, they don't know. We don't know what P is, but we want $500,000 in the future. So that means we should have 500,000 here equals P, E, and then 0 0.045 times 25. So remember our little trick from before? Hopefully you do. So let's see what this, all this E stuff is going to boil out to be. So let's clear that out. So we got our exponent, 0 0.045 times 25. So that's our exponent. Now we got to E it. So there's that E expression. So 3.0802. And again, you might say, well, can't we just round that off? Is it really going to make that much of a difference? Unfortunately, it will. If you rounded that off to 3.08, it's not going to be the same as if you had all those extra decimal places. And I'll, I'll show you. <coughs> So now we should know at this point that P, if we divide both sides by that number, that's going to get us P. So P should be equal to 500,000 divided by 3.08021684. And again, that's probably not even all of it. It's going to keep going and going and going. So that's just a rounded off number also, which isn't great, but... We deal with what we got. So remember, if I divided it backwards, if I divide this by 500,000, I get this very small number. But if I flip it around, that should be my answer. So $162,326.23. Cents. Now, I just realized that I forgot to use and do this on the graphing calculator. So let's pull that out and just kind of see how it would work. So let's turn this on, clear that. So now, where you can find your exponent, first of all, is right here, that little carrot button. And then where do you find E? Well, you still find it above the LN button on your graphing calculator. Now, again, some scientific ones that are, are between, you know, qualities uh, of these two, you might have it someplace else altogether. Um, but let me know if you can't find it. So now what's nice about this is that we can type the whole thing, a lot of the whole thing on here. So if we wanted to say 500,000, be sure to put enough zeros, divided by, and I want to... I'm going to put this E expression in there. So I'm going to go second E, and I'm going to put my exponent, 0 0.045 times 25. And I like to move, use the side arrow to put me back down at the bottom there. And now if I hit enter, look at what I got. I got the same answer. So... So your graphing calculator is kind of nice in that regard because, like I said, you can type the whole thing out. You know, 
Um, but graphic calculators are expensive, so that's the other downside. But maybe we'll do the graphic calculator on these ones too, just so you can see it in action again. All right. So let's see. Given the 2010 price for the item below, find the estimated future prices for the in, uh, indicated inflation rates. Fast food meal, 2010 price was $5.89. So what would be the 2015 price if it was a 2% inflation rate? Now, the one trick, if you will, for this one is they're not explicitly telling you what the time frame is. But we can figure that out, right? If, if we're starting in 2010 and we're going to 2015, the only amount of time that's passed is, three, is five years. So T must be equal to five in this case. So now we're home free. So our starting point was the 589. We still want to use inflation, so we're still using E. We have our inflation rate, and we have our time. So let's try it on the graphic calculator. So we got 5.89. We need our E, and then 0 0.02 times 5 equals, nice, Six dollars and fifty one cents. All right, so now for this one, again, we're starting with 2010, but now we're going to 2025. So now the T has gone up 15 years, and our inflation rate is a little different. So in 15 years. Five eighty nine would go up to what? Point ten times fifteen. Wow! So that Happy Meal just went up to twenty six dollars and forty cents. It's a pretty expensive Happy Meal. But keep in mind, that's 15 years from now, and that's with a 10% inflation rate, which is not very common. So, okay. The last application to wrap up this section is looking at the rule of 70. And the only issue is when we're talking about the inflation rate in here. So it's a very quick formula. All we're doing is getting an estimate. So, so we're not finding anything hard. We're just finding an estimate. Years to double is approximately equal to 70 divided by the annual inflation rate. The only issue is, is that this inflation rate you do not write as a decimal. Do not write as a decimal. This is the one time that you do not want to do that. All right, and now the only other thing to be careful about is if the value produced is not a whole number, then it should be rounded up. Because we're, again, we're talking about years, and we don't want to be too um, stingy on that. So we want to always round it up so that way we make sure we have enough time. All right, so the rule of 70 if you have a 2% inflation rate, the years to double, which I'll abbreviate, should be equal to 70 divided by 2 which is 35 years. Fast, right? And so for this one, years to double should be 70 divided by nine. And if we divide that by nine, seven, 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 seven. Lots of sevens. So in this case, we want a whole number. So we would round it up to eight. All right, now I'll show you one quick example of how they might try to trip you up with this. If you are not given this, the, the uh, inflation rate, and they want you to find it, they're going to have to give you the years to double. So if I said the years to double was 21, then what's the inflation rate? 
you're still going to use this formula, but think of it like a proportion. That's going to be the safest way. So I'll squeeze it down, down below here. So 21 is on the left, but I'm going to put it over 1. On the right, I still got my 70 on top, but I don't know what's in the bottom. So now you can see this is a nice quick problem. I'm going to go jump to the other side of this 81. So I'm going to say 21x equals 70 divided by 21. So x equals what? 70 divided by 21 equals a bunch of threes. Now remember, we're finding the inflation rate, so this would be 3.3%. All right. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> All right. So the next section, we're going to see some other applications, uh, and hopefully they will apply to your everyday life. So see you soon.